Hello, family. Tonight we are going to be wrapping up uh, the series we're calling A Better Way. Uh, we've been looking at the seven deadly sins and the corresponding virtues that will remove them, hopefully, from our lives. And tonight, tonight we tackle what's been called that green-eyed monster, uh, envy. Envy is a, a desire for something that we don't have, uh, something in life, something um, tangible, a uh, better house, a uh, better car. Um, but it's usually, envy is usually promoted within us as a function of awareness. In other words, I, I don't envy something until I become aware that I don't possess it. And so therefore the awareness of a nicer house, the awareness of a nicer car, the awareness of nicer clothes, the awareness of a better vacation. Uh, when it becomes aware to me, that's when envy takes over. But the corresponding virtue to envy is an attitude, an attitude of gratefulness, an attitude of gratitude, which can be sometimes difficult to possess in our world today. You know, it's not hard to see that, that we live in a broken and wrecked world. All around us, there are wrecked marriages, there are wrecked homes, wrecked economy, a wrecked political system. And, and the promise is really that things aren't really going to change until Jesus himself comes back. But you know, in the middle of all that wreckage, Jesus promised to give us life to the full. And, and this life to the full is not defined by the things that we have or don't have. The full life is defined by how we respond to trials, to temptations, to tragedy, to, to things. And one of the main things that can sabotage and strangle a full life is this attitude of ungratefulness, an attitude of envy. You know, 1 Thessalonians 5.18, Paul clearly tells us that a right attitude that we should have in this in this wrecked world. He tells us to give thanks in everything, for this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. Gratitude in and of itself is, is just seeing that God is good. Uh, gratitude comes from a clear vision of who God is. The devil has always tried to destroy God's character. You know, Psalms 100 makes it clear, though, that an attitude of, of gratitude comes from seeing that God is good. Listen to Psalms 100. It's short. Let's read the whole thing together. It says, Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. You know, Jesus wants to give you a life that is full and joyful and peaceful and powerful and purposeful and useful and faithful. But the devil also wants you to have a life that is full. Satan wants you to have a life that is full of ungratefulness and full of envy the devil knows that when you ignore God's will for gratitude, it will lead to darkness and to destruction. Listen to Paul's words in Romans chapter 1. Starting in verse 18, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. Listen to this. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools." And they exchanged the, the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Listen, therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. Over and over in this passage, a couple more times, we hear God through Paul say that God gave them up. 
He gave them up to their own ungrateful desires. Here's the thing. God is good enough and loves us enough to turn us over to what we worship. You know, in, in searching for this, this idea of gratitude and, and, and how it combats envy, I, I was amazed at how much um, non-Christian, secular stuff is out there available dealing with this idea of gratitude. There's a study on the internet called uh, 31 Benefits of Gratitude. Uh, two of the things that this person discovered was that gratitude actually makes you happier and healthier. Matter of fact, he says a five minute a day gratitude journal, writing down what you're grateful for, can increase your long term well being by more than 10%. You know, we see that, it must be right. Google said it, it was on the internet, right? But what we need to understand is it's been in the Bible for ages. Psalm 34 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalm 86 5, for you, Lord, are kind, ready to forgive, rich in faithful love to all who call on you. Psalm 145, 9, the Lord is good to everyone who wait for him, to the person who seeks him. Nahum, chapter 1, verse 7, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of distress. He cares for those who take refuge in him. Lamentations, 325, the Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the person who seeks him. There are many things designed by the devil to distract us from the graciousness of God and our resultant gratitude towards him. So we have to cultivate a mindset of looking for God's goodness in the mess of this world, in the mess of our own lives. Remember, not all things are good. However, God makes all things work to the good for those that love him and are called according to his purpose, Romans 8, 28. So don't be distracted by the momentary. You know, we're preparing to spend forever with God. Set your eyes on the goodness of God in Jesus Christ. This will give you a reason to be grateful, a reason for gratitude. You see, when we see how gracious God is, gratitude is our natural response. In 1 Thessalonians 5.18, again, another passage in the New Testament, the Greek word used for giving thanks is eucharistio, and originally meant to do a good turn to. So gratefulness is a, a spirit-filled attitude that leads to an appropriate spirit-filled action. In other words, serving the Lord with gladness. Gladness here means delight, overflowing joy, festivity, mirth, laughter. Serving God isn't dull or dry or boring. When you give, get your sight right, there is joy and laughter and festivity at seeing God's goodness take, take root in, in your life and in others' lives. You see, our gratitude can't simply be tied to our, our good words. It's clear that God's will for us is for our gratitude to be tied to good works as well as good words. <clears throat> but here's the thing. You can't serve God with grumbling inactivity. You know, we've got the example of the Israelites in the Old Testament. Exodus 16, 12. They complained about the food they were getting. Numbers chapter 11. They complained about the hardships, right? We've got the instruction from Paul. Philippians 2, 14 and 15. Do all things without grumbling or disputing that you may be blameless and innocent. Children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted, wrecked world among whom you shine as lights in the world. 1 Peter 4, 9, show hospita hospital, hospitality to one another without grumbling or without complaining. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, talking about the Israelites, verse 9 says, We must not put Christ to the test, as some of them did and were destroyed by serpents, nor grumble or complain, as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. You see, ungrateful complainers, are lumped in with idolaters and the sexually immoral and all those desiring evil that were destroyed by God. Life is a gift from God to be lived for good and for God. When our mouths are full of gratitude, they can't be full of complaining. You know, we can serve God with all kinds of grateful activity. We need to learn to give thanks in all things. You know, gratitude isn't about the pain or, or the pressure or even the problems you're facing. It's about a right attitude toward the one who controls all that is your life. 
when we remember that God is in control and works all things to the good, then we can give thanks in even the worst and best of circumstances. We need to learn to give thanks by finding our place of service. You know, we are taught that gratitude should be a part of worship, a part of giving, a part of relationships, really a part of everything we do. You know, you need to understand you're not at seeing the kills by mistake or by chance. You were called here by God to encourage, to build up, to give thanks to God through your service. Serving God and his people and those around you is a part of gratitude. Have you found your place of service? You know, I think it's obvious through the scriptures we've looked at that that we're to cultivate this attitude of gratitude. So how do we do that? Well, a couple of things. First, make it a part of your prayer life. Let your request be made known to God with thanksgiving. Be thankful in your prayer life for what God has done, for what God is doing, and for what God will do in your life. Thank those that do the very simplest and smallest things in your life. Be grateful to those around you in in the family of God, at church, in in your work setting, in your home setting. Be thankful. Sing songs of, of thanksgiving to God. Be thankful. Let that attitude permeate your being all day long. And and maybe lastly, serve God and serve others. This is one of the greatest ways to give thanks. Ask God where you are to serve his body. Where are, what is your place of, of service so that you can express your gratitude that way? You know, life isn't about how much we have, but it's about what we enjoy. Don't let envy take that away. Don't let envy take root in your life. Replace it. Replace it with an attitude of gratitude. God bless.